it's back, let's jump right in. There is no denying it. The criminal justice system, it's broken. With 2.2 million people behind bars in prisons and jails, the US has the largest prison population in the world, hands down. And many of these people are behind bars for nonviolent crimes. In fact, one in five people are locked up for petty drug offenses. The system is also infected with systemic discrimination and racial bias, with people of color making up 67% of the prison population, while they only make up 37% of the U.S. population. Criminal justice reform in the U.S. remains a big issue, but it's unclear if any progress will be made under the country's new president. Given the amount of money and power in the tech industry, there's a big opportunity there to do some good. And it may be more important now than ever. I'm here with Chris Redlitz of The Last Mile. It's a really cool program that teaches inmates how to code. We're gonna talk about the criminal justice system and what the tech industry can do to help. Chris Redlitz is a VC at Transmedia Capital and the founder of The Last Mile. The Last Mile is a six month program that teaches incarcerated people inside of San Quentin how to code and how to start their own companies. The Last Mile's first cohort of men graduated from the program in 2012. Once graduates are released from San Quentin, The Last Mile leans on its tech company partners to help place participants in internships and paid roles. Hey Chris, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. So tell me, why is it necessary that we have a program like The Last Mile? Well, there's such an issue with incarceration in America that um, such a recidivism rate of over 60% where people are getting out, um, not getting jobs, falling back in the same habits, and then going back to prison. It's really important that they're trained in employable skills. And what we've launched recently, teaching coding in prison, is one of the most employable skills there is. So that was really the, the motivation of going this route. Tell me about tech's potential impact on, on the criminal justice system. Well, there's a huge impact. Obviously, um, tech companies can hire, uh, they can hire a diverse uh, group of talent. Um, there is a huge talent pool that's in the incarcerated population today. One of the things that I realized when we started this program was that there are many talented people who went down the wrong path. Mm -hmm. With some training, they can be employed and they can add a lot of value to tech companies today. So I know that about one in five inmates are in there due to nonviolent drug offenses. Mm -hmm. How do you get tech companies to eventually hire these people? Well, initially, a few of the companies did favors for me. Um, because it was a big ask. Um, but what happened was the graduates that have come out and worked in tech companies have done so well and their work ethic is so strong and committed that now their companies are reaching out to us and saying, I would love to get more graduates because of their work ethic and their desire to succeed, regardless of whether they're coders or they're customer service, they're working in facilities, whatever it may be, just the work ethic has been huge for these people coming out and there's a total transparency. Everyone in the company knows that they were in prison, mm -hmm. knows what they were in prison for. So there's not this idea that I have a walk on eggshells, that, that I really know what they're doing and, and realize that they're making this comeback. And do you know what the experience is like for you know, these ex-inmates then transitioning into tech companies? Or are they feeling welcome? Are they making friends? Do you know what that's like? Yeah. it's uh, it's really um, a very open and inviting environment. And what we try to do is we try to invite as many people inside the prison from the tech company so they understand uh, what we're doing. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg's been inside, Stuart Butterfield's been inside, uh, many CEOs we invite in so they understand the process that they're going through. So it's not, uh, it's not a mystery when they're getting out. Many of them had been interviewed while they're still incarcerated mm -hmm. before they enter the, the tech companies. So you mentioned like Zuckerberg and Butterfield. Have they hired or are they planning on hiring anyone from the last mile? You know, it's a long process. Yeah. Um, we're still in discussions. Um, the answer is I'm confident that that will happen in the future. Um, but, you know, we're starting with most of the placements we have so far have been in, in early stage startup companies. Um, I think we're moving upstream 
and we're showing that uh, these people can be great employees. We're actually doing some work in our joint venture for companies. We just did a job recently for Airbnb. So we're having business relationships, and uh, you know we're confident we can move upstream and that we'll be able to employ in larger companies. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining me, Chris. Thanks for having me.